It's been a while since I made a dedicated PEDs and boxing video, so ah, let's have it. Huh? So these are Floyd Mayweather's PED tests from before the Victor Ortiz fight and the Robert Guerrero fight. Yeah. Now, Thomas Hauser wrote an article entitled Quote, can boxing trust USADA? Unquote. And in that article, amongst other things, he talked about Floyd Mayweather's suspicious testosterone to epitestosterone ratios, right? Whereas for a normal healthy man, that ratio is somewhere, it's about one to one, plus or minus very little, right? And it's believed that the more athletic you are, the bigger that ratio is. So 1.1, 1.5, right? The more you engage in athletic activity, the more the ratio seems to increase, right? Floyd Mayweather, who is, what, one in a million kind of an athlete, they say. His epitestosterone ratios from both of those fights were 0.8 and 0.69. So very suspicious. Now, Carbon isotope ratio, I think is what it's called. Testing is usually would be a follow-up. This would flag as a suspicious kind of thing on your PED test. And then you would follow it up with more testing and find traces perhaps of synthetic testosterone and deem the fighter a cheater, right? Which, to our knowledge, was never done, never followed up on because Floyd Mayweather never did. Olympic style testing and this is just one of the reasons why it wasn't that but the thing that everybody including Thomas Hauser missed for some odd reason on both of these tests is Floyd Mayweather's testosterone levels so in one fight I'm assuming this is the earlier fight maybe the dates are somewhere on there yeah there's a date 2011, yeah. His testosterone levels were... Where is it? 7.6 nanograms per milliliter. So, very healthy, very good, within normal range, but very... You know, a man that's... How old was he at the time? 31-year-old, 32-year-old man to have these levels? You're doing well, buddy. Congratulations if these are your levels, right? It's up to 10, generally, right? There's some outliers that will be 11, 12, maybe 15, right? But it's already a little shady, a little suspicious, a little very, very much out of the ordinary, right? And this level for Floyd is anywhere, should any, be anywhere between 3 and 10, right? So 7.6 is good, right? But then two years later... <laughs> All of a sudden, that ratio is almost 10 times higher, right? So whereas it should be no more than 10 or it may arouse suspicion, and the more above 10 that it is, nanograms per milliliter, the more suspicious it, it is, right? His is 65.9. <laughs> so it's anywhere between uh, 9, no wait, anywhere between six and a half let's say to 22 times higher than what it should be huh but no one's talking about that so whereas let, let me just reiterate this and these ratios are usually presented to you in uh, nanograms per deciliter right so you, what you do is you multiply these by 100 right so whereas the healthy, normal man of Floyd Mayweather's age, his levels should be somewhere between 300 and 1,000, right? Floyd's levels are six and a half thousand, almost 6,600, okay? But that's not a red flag. So in his fight against Richard Hall, Roy Jones Jr. tested positive for 
a precursor to testosterone. I forget the exact name, and andro something or other, right? His levels, it's a precursor to testosterone that occurs naturally in our bodies at a certain level, right? Roy Jones Jr.'s Roy Jones Jr.'s level was five to six times higher than natural levels, right? And that was deemed a failed PED test. Floyd Mayweather's actual testosterone levels in his body are anywhere between six and a half to 22 times higher than what you should expect to see. Not to mention his epi testosterone. Testosterone to epi testosterone ratios are highly suspicious, right? <laughs> this motherfucker had six and a half times the testosterone levels of a man with very high testosterone levels, natural, high testosterone levels, right? And boxing is acting like, well, there's, there's something suspicious going on here, right? Even Thomas Hauser isn't willing to just say what it is. Hey, hey, maybe he just overlooked it, right? Maybe he just overlooked it. So we've had the saga with um, Ryan Garcia testing positive recently, right? And right off the bat, Everybody, and I'm not defending the guy. Hey, if he's guilty, I don't give a shit, right? I'm consistent. I don't give a shit. Let them dope, all of them, right? And just because fight, some fighters ain't getting caught, that doesn't mean they're clean. That doesn't prove that they're clean. That doesn't mean that there's no evidence of them juicing, right? Take Alicia Baum, Baumgartner, whatever the fuck her name is, right? told you for years that she looks like a man. I, I don't know why some of you weirdos out there are getting a stiffy. She looks like a man, right? <laughs> that woman has more muscle mass, pound for pound, right? She's more yoked than Ryan Garcia will ever be. There's evidence for you right there. Look at her manly face. I don't give a shit how much makeup she puts on her face, how long she grows out her hair, how much, you know, she uh, shines them pearly whites. She looks like a dude. And then she fails a test, right? But she gets cleared. But there was evidence, right? There was ample evidence. I, I told you, she's roided to the fucking gills. I had the evidence and I went with the evidence. So there's plenty, just, just because fighter doesn't fail a PED test, that doesn't mean that there's no evidence of them cheating. Quote-unquote cheating. I don't believe that's cheating. Anyway, as soon as um, they started reporting on Ryan Garcia's positive Osterine, Osterine test, they did not fail to mention that he's also being suspected of using nandrolone, right? Because they found the metabolite of nandrolone. Metabolite of nandrol is like, think of it as, for those of you who don't know, think of it as a little trash that once nandrolone is metabolized into your body, um, the little leftovers, that's what they test for, not the actual drug, right? In many cases, anyway, I don't... Anyway, but as soon as, you know, they had the austerine, positive austerine test, they were just pushing the whole nandrolone thing too. Like, see, he has to be guilty, right? <laughs> no, why would anybody take osterine and nandrolone together when it's well known that taking osterine with some of these more hardcore steroids uh, will nullify the effects of this. You actually get a counter productive effect. You're actually fucking yourself up. But, you know, it was it was put out there to just to to in my opinion to just be like see the guy's a cheater just as what we saw with um Baterbiev recently right oh there's there was some irregularities on this test this sort of thing happens all the time i just showed you one with floyd mayweather right these sorts of irregularities happen all the time where additional testing is needed to determine they they get flagged for something and then they, they do or don't additional tests to see if, if if it's anything, right? 
So why is it that certain fighters get picked on? And this shit gets gets pushed to the forefront when this sort of thing happens all the time and you never hear about it. So right after or after Ryan Garcia was cleared of the Nandrolone suspicion, right? There was no big article front and center, right? That that he's cleared. At least of that, the thing that they already accused him of of taking, right? Or implied that he was... I can't find these articles right now. But but it took boxing scene more than 24 hours. Let's look it up. More than 24 hours to report on this. Uh, they mentioned it in another article, 24 hours after, after the fact about... Right? Kind of mentioned it in passing. But it took them more than 24 hours... To report on what was, you know, good news for Ryan. And look at how they reported on it, right? Ryan Garcia test positive for PED, being processed for second positive, right? Implying that, you know, it, it's just a matter of time. There it is. That's the article I was looking for. Ryan Garcia, still positive for Osterine, cleared of norandrosterone, the metabolite of nandrolone, right? Still positive. Like that, that's, that's no change, right? What's the change? What's the news? The news is the fact that he was cleared of nandrolone suspicion, right? And instead of making that the he- headline, what do they say? He's still positive. He's still, he's still positive. I talk about skewed and biased reporting, right? They, for whatever reason, okay, the intention is to nail Ryan, right? Is to give Devin Haney his O back. <laughs> I mean, that's been the case with the guy ever since that purported loss in Mexico and that Loma loss, right? Got to protect that O no matter what. So, as I stated before, the fact that they found Osterine right before the fight and not earlier, it just doesn't add up, doesn't make much sense. It, Ryan would not have gotten much of a benefit from that in the fight. It's, I'm not saying there would have been no benefit whatsoever, but if you research Osterine, it just, it just doesn't make sense for a fighter to take that. And it's well known that Osterine is... Um, has been found present in a lot of these over-the-counter supplements, unregulated supplements, right? Maybe, look, it could be that Ryan had some ashwagandha tested, found some osterine in it, right? Decided to take, quote-unquote, ashwagandha, knowing it had a stronger PED in there, right? But knowing that he would have an excuse and eventually get cleared. That's, That's a possible scenario. He could always be like, look, Inadvertent use. I'm sorry. I didn't take it on purpose. Ultimately, Osterine, even if he did take it right before the fight, (laughs) that had no effect on how he whooped Haney, right? He whooped him with skill, technique. He's always had punching power. Devin Haney was always chinny, right? The fact that Devin Haney got up so many times from getting hit, I mean, what kind of fucking PEDs is that guy on? We could say, right? Anyway, it's clearly there is a witch hunt, which doesn't mean that Ryan's not guilty. My My assistant's back. Look, again, I'm not saying that Ryan is not guilty, but clearly there is a push to make sure he is. Whereas he could be innocent, right? Because we have proof made with the roiding. And why does, why does that get swept under the table? Why does he get a retroactive TUE after 18 or so days after the fact, right? 
how is how is it known that Morales is on PEDs, right? At, at least according to the test, going into the Garcia fight, it's known, and the fight is allowed to happen. Is that why the New York State Athletic Commissioner just resigned? Is she, was she being pressured to make it a no contest to go after Ryan, but she's got you know a relationship with Golden Boy and doesn't doesn't want to be implicated? She's just washing her hands clean of this. Could it be? Could it be that somebody attempted to bribe her to overturn? Um, Haney's loss without awaiting, you know, the investigation? Could it be? It's a little bit odd that this woman is resigning. And New York State Athletic Commission, it was she wasn't at the helm at the time, but has allowed juice fighters to fight before, at least in one case. That wasn't a no contest. Why isn't Mayweather Pacquiao a no contest? Why isn't Mayweather Guerrero a no contest? Why isn't Mayweather's entire career a no contest? You ate crackers? Yeah. yeah. What kind of crackers? Um, marshmallows. The marshmallows crackers. S'mores? Uh, I ate the crackers. I ate the crackers. Crackers. <laughs> we love crackers. Anyway, um, why is Beterbiev being, why is there um, doubt being cast? Why is there shade being thrown at the guy for something that happens all the time and then there's all these red flags with other fighters or some red flags that we know about an outright failed positive test there's no way you could have six and a half times the testosterone levels of a very healthy high testosterone naturally high testosterone male and that not be a failed test when a testosterone precursor at similar levels, and Roy Jones Jr. was deemed a positive test. It doesn't make any sense, okay? Just as boxing fans, boxing pundits, and boxing authorities cherry-pick who they go after and who they protect. Boxing's corrupt. We all know this, right? You got all these people running around calling Devin Haney undefeated. You ate pineapple, too? Calling Ryan Garcia a coward and a cheater, right? All right. Where's that same energy when it comes to all these other guys? We all know what the deal is. We all know what the deal is, man. Anyway. We'll we'll track this story and, and see what happens. And if there are more interesting developments... We'll talk about that. What I think is going on, right? It, because a lot of people seem to think that, again, boxing is this monolith where there is this one superstructure that controls everything. No, there's a lot of... On the one hand, there's a war, promotional war. These promoters are all fighting against each other. And on the other hand, at the same time, there's like, they're all unified and, and they all have the same goals in mind. That's incoherent. That doesn't make any sense. What seems to be happening, in my opinion, right now, is that Ryan's got back, Haney's got back, and this will drag on for a while, I think. Some heads will roll, and ultimately there will be a decision made, but Ryan's people are not going to go down without a fight, and neither are Haney's people. And this could go either way at this point in time, right? Which is why heads are already rolling, and at least one person has already resigned. Because there's a lot of dirty shit going on behind the scenes, and some of that will probably come to light, right? Yeah, but we're just going to leave it at that. But but all of you whining and bitching and moaning about Ryan and complaining, I mean, come on, man, keep that same fucking energy all the time. Sorry, baby. Anyway... I'm out of here. Thanks for watching.